Valkyra Cup, back at it again! This is one of the last games we'll be seeing from the group stages. This is Sovereign Miari versus Sanjo of the Banjo. Sanjo, this is definitely Sanjo's last game now. Um, as for Sovereign though, you know, he's got all of his matches still to play, and he's got today, tomorrow, and the day after. That's, that's all the time he has. So, kind of hoping, um, you know, he's able to get those matches done. We are loading into the first map that was picked, which is Shield. Sovereign picks Vega, and Sanjo picks Random Homeworld 1, I think? So this is Sov. And the color scheme for Skov, Skov, Sov is, uh... Nah, I'm sorry, dude. I mean, what is this? Destroy enemy Where's the soul? Um, he is picking the Vega, though. He's quite a Vega main. He's got a Vega icon as his Discord pro uh, picture and everything. So, that's Sovereign. And over here, once I finish scuttling... Over here, yes, playing Random Homeworld 1, we have Sanjo. Playing the Kushan in the lovely purple and black, which I love. I just love this purple. I really feel like, uh, for Homeworld ships, having a, like, um... A neutral base with a very strong trim is a really good look. I really feel like that's how the ships are supposed to be. So like black with a strong purple on it, that looks really good. Anyway, stop talking about color schemes. We've got a probe coming out from Sov now, that's very good. Vega wants to open with probes. However, of course, I feel like, uh, and this is a good weakness for Vega to have, you know, their early game vision can be de denied quite easily. So Sandra is sending out these two uh, little squadrons of scouts. Now I believe these are actually in formation. It, they look to be. Uh, so they are sharking around actually for probes. Unfortunately they went low, so I don't think they even saw this probe. We'll have to see if Sandra actually picks up on that. Sovereign module wise he's got that research module early, of course this is shield. Getting that carrier module early would be very 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 dangerous. Sanjo with no technology, I don't even see the research ship, and a bit of a miscontrol on this mothership. This is a, uh, this could cost you the game. You need to fix this, Lee. I know the thought is, you know, oh, it's going to take so long to get back over here. I'll just leave it. Do not leave this, especially on Homeworld One. You can't have distant patches like this. Needs to be fixed right now, um, or as soon as possible. It would be very disappointing to see this last for the whole game. The carrier, uh, a little bit better. Although I think this overshot as well. Not sure what Sandra was doing to tax her APM that much. Research it from Sandra now. So Sandra with the technology deficit, I do believe. Uh, yeah, we can see fighters already in the production from Sov. Assuming he's using these uh, facilities, it could just be a defensive like net. Some players feel safer if they have the facilities. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Is this 9? Yeah, this is 9 collectors on this patch. Huge oversaturation. Big, big loss of resources happening per second here. And the flagship, to be honest, is a little bit far forward. So both players kind of dropping the ball on shield with the econ. Sancho's sending this research ship away. Now, I'm not sure if this is true, but I do believe it is true. Uh, Humboldt won't only get the bonus per research ship um, once those ships are actually docked together. Now the reason I think that is because, uh, I don't know if we can see it, yeah you can see it here. Um, research ships actually have a hidden module inside them, a research module, and I believe the effectiveness, so like the speed a research module can research stuff, is based on its health percentage. So as you can see, you start off with half health. And as more research ships dock, it actually the health of this module goes up. So and it only goes up once they've actually docked. So we'll need to confirm that that's true. Okay, here we go. Now this is something Wedgetail, who's Sovereign's friend, keeps heart, uh, going on about. You know, um, move out with early assault craft, hit resource collectors, and we do see that these assault craft do have their speed upgrade. Sandra now does have the fighters, does even have has the frigate technology. So. Um, Probably doesn't have many units banked up if she was spending everything she could on these frigates. Uh, of course, the frigate, this reveals once you have support frigates, um, whether she actually goes up to assault frigates or not, I suppose is not confirmed, but if you 
have got this technology, you are definitely getting assault frigates. Now these uh, assault craft are not going to be able to do anything. They were focusing a collector that actually just docked, so all of that damage was for naught. And now they're just getting chewed up by the whole defense and the defending interceptors. There goes one squad. There goes another squad, probably. This squad may die on the retreat. Two more on the field, three more on the field from Sov here. Would have liked to see him just build it up a bit more, like come in with six rather than coming in with three. But a um, bit of a waste here. Sanjo still trying to get her mothership in position. More and more interceptors are coming out onto the field now. I'd imagine we're going to see an assault frigate push onto this natural from S. Uh, S. Sovereign. It's because uh, there are so many uh, players right now with S names. And uh, he's playing Vega as well, and it's shield. You can't blame me. Okay, this is a pretty good carrier positioning. I would like to see the carrier facing this way a bit more. As you can see, the resource collectors don't dock until they're about here. Um, so having it on this side is pretty good, but it's probably best to just have it facing that way. Because once they detach from this, I believe they just detach vertically, whereas they have to run in um, horizontally like this. So it's best to have the carrier facing away from the perch. <clears throat> Sanjo does presumably have vision. Yeah, I'd imagine she's left them in these exact positions just because they're clipping the production ships of Sov here. Sov now with the capsule class facility, he must have had that for at least uh, 45 seconds because we do see the carrier. So Sov taking a bad fight early, but um, still feels comfortable enough to get this early carrier. Sanjo probably should attack now. I'd, if I was Sanjo, I'd be attacking. This is basically the whole of Sov's army, and you can beat that with just this ball of interceptors. You don't even need this, these extra ones. Sanjo now with the assault frigates on the field, so maybe that she was just waiting for this to push. Not double assault, though. So we've got an assault frigate and a support frigate. Needs to send those right now, I'd say. You know, there, there is a window here for you to punish this carrier um, before it gets its production online. Still the fighter facilities from Sov. Nothing spicy here. <clears throat> Sanjo just uh, perhaps a bit uncertain about the strength of her units relative to her opponent's units. You know, Hummeled Interceptors, Hummeled 1 Interceptors, uh, will definitely lay the hurt down on Assault Craft. Un uncertain about what Sanjo's really waiting for here. It doesn't have any technology queued up here. There's a second support frigate and a second assault frigate, so surely some money is being spent somewhere. <clears throat> Sanjo is, of course, the Kushan, so we're not going to see any field frigates, but um, potentially drone frigates on a map this small against fighters. Probably not, though. Drone frigates are fairly terrible. Even worse than flak frigates, to be honest, which are already quite low tier. Yeah, so this probe we saw earlier has just not been noticed by Sov. Uh, by Sanjo. Ah, oh, two S names. It's killing me. Sanjo hasn't noticed this probe from Sovereign. Um, generally, what I like to do is I like to just keep a probe next to each production ship if I'm Homeworld 1. You know, Homeworld 2, on the other hand, for the flagship, I like to get the advanced sensor array because it's got a larger radius than a probe. For carriers, it's best to just leave a probe. More frigates now. What are we seeing from Sovereign here? He's got the heavy missiles. So this is actually, the longer this goes on, the more I favor Sovereign here. Sanjo definitely had a huge window to attack though. Probably still does have this window. I'd lo Look how many interceptors Sanjo has. Just fly across, beat him up. His economy is really bad, you know, he's really undersaturated this patch and massively oversaturated this patch. So the Assault Frigate's creeping forward now. Sanjo readying up her interceptors. I'd hope to see her push right now. If there's probably four or more heavy missiles on the field, I think it becomes dicey. It needs to bring these support frigates up. I don't know what they're doing over here. The mothership moving out from Sanjo. Was that a mistake? Is she going to leave a uh, controller behind? Generally, don't move the mothership for 
Emerald one, especially unless you're planning to attack. Here we go. <laughs> Maybe not. Okay. Uh, Sandra almost taking this fight. It would have gone her way. Perhaps reconsiders. Starting to hit this heavy missile frigate with the interceptor. Strangely, obviously needs to be targeting these assault craft. The assault craft go into evasive. Just turn and take the fight, Sandra, please. It's not going to happen. These heavy missiles, of course, don't have their upgrades. Soft does definitely not have the econ to get those quite yet. So fighter, frigates, frigates. Flagship does have fighter. Oh, though this squad at least is definitely going to go down. Oh dear, these are in the uh, passive. Sanjo, please, come on, come on, look at what's happening. You don't need to play this scared. Perhaps if uh, you're a new player in a tournament, you might be playing a bit spooked. These assault frigates are just going to get chewed up now. You had your window to attack with these. It's long gone now. They're definitely going to lose this fight really hard. I have no idea why you would pull your interceptors back like this. I can't really explain what's happening here. Sanjo got very scared of pretty much nothing. So a fight that would have gone her way is just... And now look, this collector's probably going to go down. Heavy Corvettes hitting the field, which is a great technology choice. So yeah, there was a controller left behind there. Collector goes down at the front for Sanjo. This assault craft squadron's on two members. This one gets eaten alive. This one, probably going to die because it got frozen. The assault frigates now kiting back. Again, these support frigates were just sitting here doing absolutely nothing. I see this from Sanjo in every single game. Um, her last tournament game as well was the same against Ruby. Had support frigates, didn't use them. Heavy Corvettes, uh, well done, using the burst ability on these missile frigates. Now the missile frigates still don't have armor, so they will go down quite quickly. As you can see, the Heavy Corvettes do very good damage. I kind of wish they would stop running away. Sanjay now taking this fight against uh, Sovereign's assault craft and winning it, of course. She is reinforcing those. There are also, um, yeah, you know, Sovereign's not reinforcing his ACs. Um, a couple of them got docks off, but this one might. Flagship now adding its damage to the fight. But right now, in the current build of 2.4, Humboldt 1 Interceptors are, are simply superior to Humboldt 2 Interceptors. I think the Higarans have a slightly better matchup, but Vega Assaultcraft really struggle to take this fight. A lot of heavy corvettes now from Sanjo. Probably best to just take the support frigate and run it over here. The, it really has no place in this fight anymore. We are seeing, you know, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, if you count this one over here. But on the front lines, at least, we've got seven heavy missile frigates here. Now, these heavy corvettes, the number of those is building up steadily as well, though. And a number of these heavy missiles are on low health. This one's going to go down, then this one. Then, presumably, this one will be focused. So what is Sovereign trying to get done with his heavy missiles before they go down? It looks like he's trying to target this carrier. Sandra really, really, really needs to wake up and pay attention to this. Just tack a support frigate or three repair corvettes on there or something like that. Get a cloak, maybe build some salvage corvettes. What is Sovereign going to do against salvage corvettes? Absolutely nothing. You've got the fighter dominance. Uh, unless you do moves like this, doing stuff like this just make, means your interceptors get chewed up for free. I mean, look at this. Look how many will die here. A lot of miscontrol from Sanjo. You know, making good unit choices, but... The miscontrol on all these units and the, the lack of faith, I think, in her ability to take fights has really, really, really damaged her. She does not have the capital class technology, so can't replace this carrier if it goes down. Please build repair corvettes. Sovereign now, you know, recognizing that he's way ahead, just piling on more heavy missiles here. Lack of focus fire from these heavy corvettes means that many of them survived far longer than they should have. There goes the carrier, and honestly, that could be the game. Humboldt 1 cannot replace this carrier, especially since she doesn't have... well, she just got it. So presumably building that carrier back up again now, but it's going to take several minutes. <clears throat> just a train of heavy missiles flying in here, although at this point I will say they don't really have much to shoot. Now we see the repair corvettes coming out, a bit too late here. They will just be tasked onto the heavy corvettes. 
very good. Sandra needs to recognize that uh, losing this interceptor fight though will be fatal. Probably best to keep reinforcing on interceptors. I don't know what these heavy corvettes are doing. You need to be shooting these heavy missile frigates. It's nice that you'll get a carrier eventually, but um, the heavy missiles are going to kill you all your collectors and then your mothership. Lance fighters on the field now. Grab your interceptors, focus this lance fighter squadron. If you don't do that, you're going to lose everything. It's two on the field. And a cloak now from Sovereign. Really well played. Sandra really needs to grab these heavy corvettes and deal with the heavy missiles. Split, splitting off maybe six or so heavy corvettes to just start tacking on damage to the collectors as well would be an excellent move. Now the heavy missiles do start f uh, firing into this mothership. The Hummel 1 mothership of course starts with much more health than the Hummel 2. Uh, about double, not quite. Well, not even really quite. Um, double this health would be obviously 500, whereas this is just 420, plays it. Um, the heavy corvettes now shooting heavy missile frigates that aren't even in the part of the fight. Interceptors from Sanjo with no focus fire whatsoever, just sort of lackadaisically flying around shooting whatever they feel like. Heavy missile goes down, but look, grab your heavy corvettes, get them killing these guys. They're going to kill your mothership. Sanjo now, presumably a carrier is about to pop out here. Love to see just two salvage corvettes. Grab a heavy missile, cart it in, grab another one, cart it in. But uh, I'm seeing Sandro's interceptor count dwindling here. Sovereign is reinforcing his assault crafts with this fire bay, and Sandro has no carrier. Presumably one of her production queues is taking up building that carrier as well. Assault frigates on the field for Sovereign now, that's a really good idea. That is actually what's probably been killing most of Sandro's interceptors. And I've got to say, you know, this is not looking good for Sandro. This mothership is on very low health. Heavy Corvette's taking great fights against these frigates. Grab them! Take out these frigates, though! Why are you shooting assault frigates? They're not doing anything to you. You're about to lose the game. Sandro now realizing this, presumably, is saying, Oh my god! When did these heavy missiles get here? How long have they been shooting things? Uh, but it's too little too late. You know, look how many lance fighters there are now. There's one. Uh, I see another. I definitely saw three, at least. You know, Heavy Corvette's are beefy boys, but lance fighters hurt. Would love to see a support frigate here. Just the support frigate, tack it on. There goes another heavy missile. As I said, you know, these heavy missiles have been beaten up before. They would have been very quick to kill. Now the heavy corvette's getting chewed up by these lance fighters though. And Sandra's interceptor count is just so low that they can't even deal with it anymore. I'm still not seeing the carrier come out from Sandra. These heavy corvettes are probably going to die before they're even able to kill the heavy missiles. And you know, there's more coming in now. Sovereign's saying, oh, I've only got four over here. Well, I've, I'm winning the strike fight so hard, I can now just go back into making heavy missiles. And this looks like a checkmate for Sanjo. Really does not have the time left or the units left to deal with any of this stuff coming out from the Vega player. Sovereign playing a very clean game, recognizing his strengths, moving in when he, he knew he was stronger, when he sensed weakness, and there is the carrier, but... For how long is this mothership going to last? Not long is the answer. All of the heavy corvettes are gone now, and Sandra's intercepts is just getting chewed apart by these uh, assault frigates. One heavy corvette left gets cleared up. Mothership going down very soon. The carrier is now out, but this patch has been decimated. Probably doesn't even have the money to support this anymore. There's one repair corvette trying to heal the mothership. That was just going to get picked off. There's another one coming out here. But, you know, it's there's nothing. There's nothing here for Sanjo. Just a handful of interceptors and a repair corvette. And the mothership's going to go down. Almost certainly. This is five heavy missiles, six heavy missiles, seven, eight. You know, nine. It's uh, This mothership's gone. And with it is the game for a homeworld one player. Homeworld one players, you, you, if you lose your mothership, you've lost the game. Unless you've dealt such crippling damage to your opponent that you've essentially won the game already. Losing the mothership is a death blow. Sandra trying to hyperspace her mothership away now, but it's too late, and these collectors are preventing it from actually doing so, because they're in the middle of their docking animations. 
I wonder if Sandra's going to get away with this. I don't think so. Or perhaps, just by the skin of her teeth. However, the focus now is going to be this carrier, and this is going to go down extremely quickly. Nine heavy missiles on the field here. Sancho's mothership over here now. Maybe trying to scuttle or something to just uh, spite her opponent's resource collection. Support frigate now, but uh, it's, it's too little. It's not enough here. Yes, yeah, I think she's going to scuttle just to kill these collectors' sovereign. <laughs> not letting her get anything, though, is going to try and dock as many as he can. I wonder how many are actually going to go down. I'd say probably five, right? I think this one's going to dock, so maybe six. Yeah, six. Carrier goes down, and that's the game. So GG, game one goes to Sovereign Miari on shield, which was Sanjo's pick. You know, she picked shield, she didn't like the idea of Vega getting too much economy. And to be honest, Vega didn't get that much economy. You know? Only barely outmined you. But the RUs, like, Sanjo couldn't spend her RUs. And her early lead, she didn't press it at all. <clears throat> a quite a frustrating sort of game to watch, to be honest, because it was in Sanjo's court, and she sort of uh, just didn't drive it home. Lack of experience, I'm going to say. Alright, let's get the second one on the, on the road. Now, Sovereign's map pick was Saren Badlands, I believe. One of my favorite maps. I think it has the potential to be the best map in the game right now. Uh, I think Armed for Burial is very good, and I think Shield Evolution is also very fun. Okay, so game two should get underway momentarily. We have to make sure the positions are correct. Two versus five. There we go. I will join Sandra's team, I suppose. Or oh, no, 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 Sovereign, because I was on his team last time. Let's keep the colors standardized. Anyway, let's click in. Alright, so good luck, have fun to both players. Second game of the round robin, of course, is, uh, you know, it's not career ending. You lose this game, potentially still see you in winners. Although I, th I think Sanjo is just clipping into winners. Okay, so, uh, bit of a rough patch there. We had a lot of issues trying to get into this game. So we're trying again now with the spectators playing Humbled One races and just hyperspacing away. Uh, observers were changed. Uh, during the middle of this tournament, uh, which is a bit of a strange call to have made, but um, I mean the ideas behind them were very good. It's probably just Tumble Remastered being finickety that is to blame here. Uh, so yeah, we are loading into the game just fine now. I'm gonna start the game. I'm gonna jump away to somewhere far away. Hyperspace jump initiated. Destroy enemy mother so at least I can see Sovereign and introduce Sovereign. Sovereign is a uh, he's an old hat. He's a Vega player from the dawn of time, and he is playing with the very very boring grey on black, which I don't like. I'm just gonna be honest, don't like it. Okay, my jump's complete. I'm over here, so I'm gonna jump away before scuttling. Otherwise, I'll leave a pile of debris which can be collected. <coughs> So we tried with the Observer races, and uh, we were getting very strange issues, like the game couldn't really progress, people were having frame rate issues. Uh, we've just loaded in now as Tidan. Uh, both the Observers, me and Echo, we just picked Tumbled 1 races and jumped away. And we seem to be fine now, so... It does seem to be the new Observer changes. Don't agree with everybody. Okay, so we've got Sanjo over here, uh, playing the random Tumbled 1, and rolled Tidan. Which, I feel like... Uh, it was pretty unlucky, the rolls that, that sort of uh, Sanjo got here. Got Kushan on shield, which is a map where I'd prefer Tidan because of fields. And rolled Tidan on Saren Badlands, which is a very distributed map. 
On this map I prefer to play Kushan, simply because the cloaked fighters can actually get some good angles. Not that tie down are bad, of course. Sovereign with a very... <laughs> Sovereign. Sanjo. I'm going to keep mixing that up. With a very standard opener here, just uh, the double collector cues going over here. Needs to send these scouts out. There's a probe and a dust cloud here for Sov. Very well positioned. So there are actually two dust clouds for this player. One here and one here. Whereas for this player, there's only really one. It's a very small difference. Um, it does mean as the player in position 2 here, you will need to have two probes, one here and one here. But for player in position 5 over here, just needs one probe in their main dust cloud. Well, tell a lie. I mean, to be honest, the dust cloud is so wide that you probably do need two to cover the whole thing, but it's the same story for this player. So three against two, I guess, if you want to be optimal about it. Scouts now were indeed sent out for Sanjo, so Sanjo sees this patch. Scout just continues flying off into space here. I mean, that's Balcora in the back there, right? Maybe it's going over there? Another scout here from Sanjo sees the flagship, sees the extraordinarily early carrier from Sovereign. So from Sanjo, I'm kind of feeling like I should be playing... Uh, if it was me, I would start making corvettes very quickly. Either corvettes, so light corvette push, or a int plus bomber push. I wouldn't try and play a macro game here. Now that my opponent has got this sub three minute carrier, I wouldn't even attempt it. You know, something on the cards for Homeworld 1 in this scenario, if I see such a ridiculously greedy carrier, I'm probably thinking, hey, I'm just going to leave uh, some controllers behind and hyperspace in. <clears throat> We're not seeing any... Oh, there it is, the fighter technology just popped for Sanjo. Sovereign with fighter technology of his own. Probably can't fund that though. Uh, if you're going to make this carrier so early, it's going to be difficult to get your fighters up and running. I wonder where Sovereign's going. He's going after this patch down here, it looks like. So trying to take those three patches very early. Although this position is quite, you know, it's not too far away. I'd love to see Sanju just make a whole bunch of units and flood in. But I'm a bit worried about it because we saw in that shield game just now, even with an overwhelming advantage, Sanju seems to be pretty worried about taking fights. Not very confident with her, with the unit abilities that she has. Now Sanjo with a probe up here, but this is not really where you want to put probes on Badlands. It is within this dust belt here, which is quite interesting. Um, actually, that is something I've never really seen players consider. So the dust cloud actually extends up here, as you can see it's like a band that runs like this. So putting a probe in there means that it's unlikely to be seen by things going beneath it. Very uh, smart positioning of this probe, actually. However, would prefer to see one where Sovereign's one is and in her main dust cloud here. Sovereign, uh, just doing Vega things. Kinda seen this from every single Vega we've seen. Nothing very interesting going on. Just taking the patches, not getting contested for it. Already outproducing the opponent. Just uh, standard things, really. Now, Sanjo definitely has seen everything that her, her opponent is going for. Saw the early carrier, sees this position, sees this... Might not see that position, actually. Mm. Probably a little bit of a suboptimal placement on these scouts. This scout should probably be here. This scout is, seems to be fine. Sanjo with the early fighters, but seems to have given up on it. Yeah, trying to get that third patch herself now, but I, it's really not going to work out for the Homeworld 1 player. I mean, you don't have the production to make use of a third patch for quite a while. And I, I'm seeing that this is not really going Sanjo's way again. You know, just looking at the game as it's progressing and unfolding here, Sanjo really needed to rush here to, to punish that super early carrier. You know, that was the correct response would have been to go in right now. Sovereign doesn't even have speed on his interceptors. Still, he doesn't have speed. Because of the cost he's, he's put down. But Sanjo, you know, I said it before and I'll say it again, very afraid 
to make aggressive moves. Doesn't trust that she's going to win fights. We are seeing these interceptors now moving forward in some a more aggressive posture, but will we actually see her take the fight? I really hope so. So with that probe, Sanjo seems to be tracking it. I can't tell. Half the interceptors have stopped doing anything, and half the interceptors have taken a bad no fight. Problem. This is a cakewalk. I got Should you. be reinforced very quickly, though. Sanjo needs to get a probe in here, probably not even thinking about it. This probe is invisible, of course, for Sanjo. Can't see it at all because of the dust cloud. Whereas Sovereign can see everything. Sanjo with a rogue collector, definitely intended for this patch. Are we going to see an early carrier attempt from Sanjo? Collector just sitting here, not doing anything. Sanjo leaves a controller behind at this patch, it starts to move the carrier forward. It does have assault frigates, this is quite interesting. If these assault frigates were hyperspaced perhaps to this patch here, or even to the main, or even to the natural, any any of these positions would be fine, because we see Sovereigns actually on triple fighters here, and Vega of course have to research the bombers. Sanja now doing this thing again she does and did last game, which is very, very bad. Just selects every single interceptor she has and issues a dock all command. You you take huge losses when you do this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six interceptors just go down for nothing. No contest. Sanja moving in with these assault frigates though. This is very good. This module has been sold though, which tells me that Sovereign probably researched corvettes or frigates already. Uh, if we see a frigate module pop up here, I feel like it's going to be curtains for Sanjo. If she can take the interceptor fight convincingly though, uh, she does have a chance. More assault frigates coming out here. This carrier in it, a bit of a strange position. I feel like if you want to move forward with the carrier, it should be forward. You know, being going halfway like this, probably a little bit suboptimal, but not too bad. The assault frigate is now flying towards the mineral line, which is a good idea. <clears throat> Sovereign not losing losing this fight by any stretch of the imagination. Sanjo needs to be double pumping ints this whole game, I feel like. He needs to win this inter interceptor fight. Assault Frigates should get this kill? I pray to god they get this kill. It's so frustrating seeing... Uh, uh, okay, I don't mind it in this scenario because in this scenario Sovereign actually cloaked. So uh, those collectors will be safe. Of course, collectors do get revealed when they are mining. Also, when they are docks, they get revealed. But when they're docks, they're pretty much invulnerable. Sanjo needs to pull these interceptors back, build up a bigger ball, and then go in. Can't tell what Sovereign has on his second carrier, because it is the cloaked carrier. But I'm looking at frigates on this carrier, and there's a frigate facility probably on the mothership. Nope, just on this carrier. So I believe this is double frigs. Uh, is this a bit greedy from Sovereign? Is this a bit more than he can uh, actually deal with? Three carriers of three patches. Feels a bit... could be too much. If this patch especially goes down, he's going to be a bit starved for resources. But I feel like if he keeps taking good fights like he is here with these uh, just trickling in interceptors from Sanjo, he should be in a good position. Sanjo with the capital class facility already though. I do like to see that. Would love to see this carrier turn around now because it's definitely in danger of being targeted down by heavy missiles. Would love to also see a couple of repair corvettes, although now that Sanjo's managed to lose the interceptor fight, those would not be safe. The reason repair corvettes would be ideal here is because the heavy missiles obviously can't shoot them very well. Sanjo manages to lose that fight with the assault craft, not sure how this could happen. Just suddenly stopped making any units at all, I really don't know what she's building with this carrier. Maybe double pumping frigates or something? No, we're starting to see some interceptors pop out again, but one by one like this, they're just going to get chewed up. Definitely not the best engagements I've seen from the player. Macro is okay, but these two collectors need to be harvesting, and trickling in interceptors like this is no good. This carrier probably, in all honesty, I would just jump it away. This is going to go horribly wrong for you very quickly. This carrier uh, is not actually in passive, so even though it's in a cloak field, it is visible to the opponent. Sandra now focusing it down, which is a good idea. Uh, her assault frigates really don't have anything much else to do. But I also feel like San uh, Sovereign 
can't really use this carrier anymore anyway because his patch has been beaten up quite a lot. And he's, he's, he's on two patches here. Uh, which is interesting because that does mean that Sanjo is on an economic lead. Uh, assuming she gets these collectors mining which is, have just been sitting here for about... Uh, that collector here has been sitting here seven minutes doing absolutely nothing. Carrier will go down here but again I don't feel like it matters too much. Sovereign can't afford this carrier as it stands anyway. Sanjo's carrier needs to get the hell out of here. I presume a second carrier is about to pop for Sanjo, I don't know what else she would have got this for. Could see a missile destroyer. Not sure if I'd like that idea though. Sovereign uh, Sanjo now needs to pick up these assault frigates and just focus these collectors down ASAP. You can't get this carrier, you can't kill a frigate, kill the collectors, do it as fast as possible. If you can inflict an economic lead here, uh, you can actually pull yourself back into this game. Unfortunately though, Sanjo decides to get damage on a heavy missile frigate, which is probably not even going to go down before these assault frigates go down. And we see the collectors just fly away. You know, the, doing damage to one heavy missile frigate is really the worst use of your time. <clears throat> Sovereign now with more and more and more frigates. Uh, it's probably comfortable now with the two carriers on the flagship of two patches. This is probably actually a good amount of production. Sanjo, grab your uh, carrier and jump away. Jump away right now. You can't slow boats away from this. You have to jump away. The collectors now were actually assigned to do something. Still nothing from the flagship from from Sanjo. Why does this capital class facility exist? What is Sanjo actually buying here? So the carrier does indeed jump away. Very good call from Sanjo. But now this resource patch is just completely wide open. Uh, these interceptors flew in and got massacred again. Would instead like to see corvettes coming out from Sanjo here, but I don't feel like she's got much of a chance here. Look how many heavy missiles are on the field now for Vega. Really stupid. Honestly, you should not be able to make frigates this quickly. It's so stupid, but um... Uh, you know, he never lost the interceptor fight because of poor control from Sanjo, that must be said. Now the Interceptor's just running and gunning for these resource collectors and they will get them. There's really nothing here for Sanjo to protect them. Sanjo needs to keep running this carrier away. Very curious as to see why this capital class facility was created, because I haven't seen anything like that produced from the flagship. The only thing that I can imagine would take this long to get out is a, is a heavy cruiser, and a heavy cruiser is going to lose to this many frigates. Which is really stupid, I mean you shouldn't be able to make this many frigates. I mean. For God's sake, he only has two carriers. Why is this many on the field? It's really stupid. But um, I mean, that is basically why we're seeing so many Vega players in this tournament because this is just not really fair. You know, Hummel One does have its fair share of uh, stupid things like missile destroyers, but this is this is just not. <laughs> it's not acceptable. Can't seem to convince people that it's not acceptable. People uh, will defend this to the end of time. It's been like this since 2.1, you know, a Vega player, you try and tell them that this is not fair, but they just won't have it. <coughs> Sanjo trickling out iron cannon frigates here, it's, um... Doesn't look very hopeful for Sanjo. That's a missile destroyer from Sanjo, so that was the choice. But, um... This carrier is going to go down, basically. I wonder if there's an inhib. There's no inhib, so it could jump away again, but um, to be honest, these heavy missiles could honestly just shoot this missile destroyer down here. Probably would take two volleys, maybe one and a half volleys. Missile destroyer using its barrage on the interceptors. Carrier getting focused down. Sanjo, please recognize this. Jump your carrier away again. So potentially these interceptors might get cleared up from Sovereign, if he doesn't just grab them all and dock them here. But uh, they've already done the damage, you know, Sanjo's back on two patches, Sovereign's on three patches again. Carrier's gonna go down, no jump, for some reason. Missile Destroyer will be the next target, presumably, unless they just go for the Mothership, which they can. Uh, infiltrate a frigate now from Sovereign.
many of uh, Sovereign's interceptors were cleared up. So potentially, you know, uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> Mine layers plus bombers could be the best solution here, but even with uh, very, very niche units like that, the heavy missiles will still power through them. There's really nothing you can do about it. They just have too much health, you know, like this is here, this is about as much health as a battlecruiser and a half. It's, uh, it's really not very assailable once you let it get out of control like this. Looks like the missile destroyer might even get captured here. There's nothing really to deny this. The missile destroyer itself can't deal with this, you know, the missile burst <coughs> was already used and it did that much damage. Destroyer from Sandra here is just going to get cleared up by these heavy missiles. Uh, does eventually take this intercept to fight, but it's too late. Me Vega, me strong, I think is the, the motto being chanted here. Uh, I mean, even making the wrong units here, Lance Fighters are coming out for some reason. Uh, for absolutely no discernible reason, there's no Corvettes on the field. Is this gonna duck? It was this one squadron. Oh yeah, it was. I thought that was just one assault craft. Though. Oh wait, yes it is. I can't believe these two were able to duck. Very well played by Sov. Good duck though. Sanjay's missile destroyer just been captured, and um, Vega really didn't need more tools to be the best race in the game. But the missile destroyer as well. I mean, Homeworld One has some really busted units, and the missile destroyer is one of them. This is such a silly concept for a unit. Uh, a unit that just denies a whole class of units from the game as a poor concept of a unit. That's what the Missile Destroyer is. Um, for Vega though, I mean this is... Uh, this is... we're seeing this every single game basically, and it's for good reason. It's the best thing Vega can do, and it's probably the best thing any race can do at the moment. Very... I'm not going to say it's anti-fun, but it's it can get a bit boring seeing it every single time. Uh, Carrier just popped out from Sandra here, but the flagship's going down. I think the flagship tried to jump away, that's why I can't see its health bar, but it's it's been killed. Infiltrators on the field here. They can actually steal collectors, interestingly. I'm going to get away from this before it chops my frame rate to pieces. Uh-huh, there goes the flagship, morphed into a carrier. The carrier's trying to jump away, but can't, because the collectors are docking with it. Which is, uh, it's always funny when people say, I'll oh, just jump your production away. But you can't. I mean, look how long it takes. This carrier's going to go down before these collectors are done docking. We do see those bombers coming out now from Sanjo. But, uh, calling the GG, quite rightfully so. This game was probably over once Sovereign was able to just get carriers for free. There's nothing really Sanjo could have done in that scenario. Needed to rush him very quickly once she saw that carrier come out. Um, not doing that probably cost the game. Yeah, we're seeing Sovereign with a not a huge lead in the resources, but a, definitely a real lead. And obviously he had the production to make it work, so... Ship kills actually Sanjo with the higher kill count here, but Sovereign with the more meaningful kills, I expect. So there we go, 2-0 to Sovereign. Another win for the Vega player, huh? Sanjo, of course, is a less, less experienced player, so Sovereign, with the cleaner gameplay, uh, reacting better to the situations he's seeing, must be said. Sanjo, uh, especially in the Shield game, game 1, very indecisive. Could have taken that game, but uh, held back for no reason. But both players, you know... Sovereign trying to get back into the game after long inactivity, and Sanjo basically just picked up the game, so still a lot to learn for her. But great showing from both players here. I look forward to more of their matches. Sanjo, we won't see Sanjo until the elimination phase now, but Sovereign, uh, if he gets his games done, perhaps the next couple of videos are going to be with Sovereign in them, so look forward to that. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time.